Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a closer look at the tip panels of the CN model sensor, the, the uh, new F5J model that CN has. Um, we're going to take a look at the parts themselves and then we're going to go over um, installation of the uh, aileron servos and a few other little things that you have to do. Uh, this is a tip panel as it comes from CN. This model came with the uh, Servo Ramen IDS tray installed and um, it's not truly IDS because it actually has a regular control horn. It's kind of an interesting feature here. Um, we'll have a closer look at that. So as I said in the unboxing video, the hinge line on this is on the top surface. Uh, most models I've seen, this hinge line is on the bottom, so I don't know if this is supposed to be uh, more aerody aerodynamically beneficial or not, but it, uh, that requires a kind of a unique uh, solution to install the um, servo arm or servo hub on the IDS. They actually have to flip it around and run the linkage on the bottom instead of on the top, as you can see. So they have um, the standard servo ramen frame, the foam type frame, and the smallest uh, hub or arm here. This is for a KST X08. And looks like they've ground down uh, the arm considerably to maybe reduce the overall thickness. And then they have a piece of the uh, standard arm you would use, but it's cut and there's a tiny piece of piano wire glued into that so this arm has been cut and drilled and then there's a piece of piano wire you can see how that's routed and then there's a uh, if I remove this sort of padding for transport you can see it's got basically a conventional carbon horn and the rod exits the bottom skin and it has an L bend and this was all installed at CN so if you get this model with the frames installed this is how it will come you can also get this without any of this installed and it's, it's a little bit cheaper so let's weigh this panel this is a light version so let's get an idea of how much it weighs I'm gonna weigh the empty panel here and it's uh, 111 grams or 112 111 or 112 it's kind of bouncing between that and what I've done also is I have uh, already installed uh, a servo in the other panel. So here's the KST X08 installed. And uh, it doesn't have the servo cover on it, obviously, but there is the wiring installed. And there's a um, connector at this end here. So we can weigh this one too. And that is 130 grams, so that extra weight is from the uh, wire on the servo. Okay, um, one thing uh, that's a little different about this guy compared to other planes, the location for the aileron servo is pretty far outboard. So you see this distance from the root of the tip panel? You know, this is about, uh, I would say, 12 inches or so. And um, normally we see the aileron servo right here, and most people do that to get the weight as far, as far away from the tips as possible. I don't really know why CN has done this. Um, the, the downsides to this that I can see is we have more weight closer to the tip, and we have to run longer wire here to um, get this tip panel to mate up to the center panel. Now, um, a benefit from this might be that we're going to have less control surface deflection when this aileron is moved up and down. Uh, we might have less twisting under load because the control horn is more centralized on the span of the aileron and it's not just out here by the by the roots. But you know at the speeds these F5J models fly, um, I don't know if that's a big deal really. So I would have rather seen this closer to the uh, root and uh, that would also give you more thickness here for your servo arm. So it's just a little nitpick. It's not a big deal. Obviously, we'll have to see how, 
how this thing flies. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is just kind of, I'm going to install the uh, the aileron servo on this other panel, and uh, we're going to route the wire in there and everything, and we'll just, we'll just uh, go over all that. Okay, let's get started on installing um, our aileron servo in the tip panel. First thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of work on the frame itself. So right here on these corners um, I'm gonna put a, a little bevel on these. These are the mounting points for the servo and if you look at the servo right in here there's actually a radius so if you were just to bolt these in as they are um, this radius is not going to allow these tabs to sit flush on the um, the IDS mount so all I'm going to do is take a file and just sand a little bevel in here on both sides like this, uh, you probably want about a millimeter in width on that bevel or a chamfer, I should say. Sorry, champ, probably chamfer is a better word. And then just keep doing this, and uh, you can test fit the servo to see if it sits flush. But I've got a little bit of a bevel sanded in on both corners here or chamfer. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to hold the aileron so, uh, somewhat um, neutral. And I'm just going to test fit the servo. See uh, how it goes in here. Put the motor side in first. I'm just going to wiggle this back and forth a little bit to try to get a feel for where it engages. Um, you don't want to force this in because you could strip out the uh, splines and the IDS hub. So if you're trying to get it in and it, it doesn't feel like it's wanting to go in, you probably don't have it quite uh, lined up. Okay, that went in. Kind of show you what it looks like here. So that fits well. It took. It takes a little bit of coercion. Um, sometimes these things slip right in. Sometimes they don't. Um, next thing I'm going to do is get a servo tester and make sure the servo is centered. I have it on the tester here. I'll just take it to center like that and then I'll try it again okay goes in all right so we know that the servo will actually go in now and fit but there's a couple more things I want to do before I actually uh, bolt it in first thing is uh, the holes for the screws um, we're not using the screws that came with the servos to bolt these down to the frames um, actually, the uh, servo ROM and IDS frames come with screws if you were just to buy the servo ROM and kits. But when I got this model, the hardware pack from CN didn't have those screws. So um, I didn't really know what to do, and I was kind of looking around um, 
and I actually had to buy some screws on Amazon. I'll make sure future models have screws in them, but uh, I'm going to be using uh, these uh, 1.7 millimeter by 5 millimeter uh, self-tapping screws. And the problem with those is uh, I got to open up the holes. So I got to open up these holes right here slightly. So what I do is I just use a file, a round file like this, and just give it some twirls. You only need to take a maybe quarter millimeter off. Do that for both sides of the servo. I mean on both sides of the mounting tab. And then once I do that, I can get a screw here's our screw here and we just want to make sure it fits in the hole so this one's still a little tight so just keep using the file I suppose you could use a drill too if you had a 1.7 or 1.8 millimeter drill bit or something in standard that was uh, comparable. So I got these holes filed down and the screws are fitting in there nicely. So that takes care of that problem and the next thing I want to do is there's not much room in the servo bay so I don't want to have a ton of extra wire here um, and you know we could try to save a little bit of weight so what I'm going to do is clip off a bit of this wire so something like this you can see Just clip that off like that. Oh, I'd say that's about uh, two inches of wire or so, maybe 40 or 50 millimeters. And then I'm gonna crimp on uh, a new end on here. Okay, so I have these little uh, connector pins for uh, servo leads, servo connectors, and then I have a uh, the plastic housing, JR type, and uh, got some wire stripping pliers here, and crimpers. This isn't very difficult at all. Uh, if you have the tools and the little parts, it's actually pretty easy. And it really makes uh, customizing servo leads and extensions uh, for your particular model uh, pretty easy. And you can end up saving some weight or having neater installations. So I just kind of separated these three wires. Then I'm going to use a stripper. Not the pole dancing kind, uh, the plier kind. Although some of you might like the other kind. And then we'll just strip back some wire. Now since this is a pretty thin gauge wire, I strip back quite a lot of the insulation and I'll show you why. So what I do is just twist up one end like this. And then I'm going to just fold it over.
like that. That way there's a little more meat there for the uh, crimp to grab onto. I found if I don't do that, sometimes it's easy to pull the wire out after you've crimped it. So I've got a crimp loaded up in the pliers and we'll just do up one of these. And that's what it looks like. And with these small ones, I kind of come back and give the give the base a little squeeze like that. So that's really it. Um, let me do the rest of these, and then I'll come back. All right, we get all the connectors on here. And now we can just slip these into the plastic housing. Be mindful of the way they go. So it's gonna be black, red, signal. And if they don't go in, Quite easily, you can just use a little tool to help them out. There we go. One servo with a shortened lead. Now I'm going to uh, just use a servo tester again just to make sure everything works. So that's all good. Now I'll recenter it. Okay, so next thing on the agenda, we need to run some wire uh, from the, the hole here that they have out to the servo bay. So I have a piece of uh, 28 gauge wire here, and this is about, uh, I would say, four or five inches longer than it needs to be. And this wire here is fairly stiff. And I found on the other panel I could just actually use my just use my fingers and, and push it through and it went all the way through. So let's try that again. She's feeding in quite nicely. And it's bottomed out. I don't know if you can see in here, but uh, you can see the wire just kind of barely poking out right here. And actually, if I push it through more, you should see it. See that right there? So what I'm going to do is get it right to where it barely starts poking out and just try to fish it out with uh, some kind of implement or tool. that alone for now. Okay. No, we should be able to bolt the servo down. Okay. 
Again, this is centered. We know that. Did that with the tester. And we'll just try to coerce this guy in here. be able to screw it down. So I got a small screwdriver. Ooh, got some kind of color shift happening on our camera here. Oh well. Get one started. started servo installed all right now we have to put a connector on this end of our wire that we put through the wing so it's the same process as the servo except we're using the uh, other ends of the connector so this is what I'll be using and then a regular housing so we'll just strip these wires back and we're going to do the same exact thing. So I don't think I'll show you guys this, this stuff again. So let me get these done and then I'll come back to you. All right, I got the connector on here. So we can just uh, plug these together like this. And we'll end up kind of trying to tuck this connector in right here, uh, kind of in front of the servo. But we'll do that when we're all finished. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna basically just pull this wire through, and then now we have to put another connector on this end. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, I put a connector on the other end, so the root end of the uh, panel. And then, of course, we have this guy done here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is get a little bit of uh, electrical tape, something like this. And I'm just gonna wrap this around this connection just to keep it from separating and to potentially stop any shorts because there is carbon around this area and what I'm going to do is try and tuck this in here like this So just in front of the servo. And um, this is uh, a plastic cover that came with the kit. Let me just see how it fits, if it needs to be trimmed or anything. And it's looking pretty nice. I don't think I have to trim this in any way. And I think it's got some kind of film. I think this blue stuff is a film. Let's see if we can get it off of here. This is clear. Is there a film on the other side? Yes. Okay, so they are clear. There we 
go. Nicely cut, looks like these are laser cut or something. So again, this is gonna go right here. Just over that servo. And then they do supply these kind of vinyl cutout pieces. Um, I guess I'll try to use this. I was gonna use some black pinstripe tape but uh, we'll try this first. Just don't really see this going on really easy. But let's try. I guess that's alright. Kind of feels like there's a ridge. Look at my other panel and see. Yeah, I think that's just the way it is. It doesn't quite, like, the step down here, the molded in, isn't thick enough, so there's a little bit of a ridge. That's fine. Okay, well, I mean, honestly, I think that's about it. That's, that's how you do up one of these panels, a tip panel on the sensor. Um, wasn't a whole lot of work. Uh, one thing that I'll do off camera is just put um, about an inch wide strip of packing tape top and bottom here um, and that'll just protect your carbon skins from the uh, tape that you use to attach the tip panel to the center panel. I'll also do the same thing on the center panel pieces. So there we go. Um, we can plug it into the servo tester and see what the travels look like. Look pretty good to me. Plenty of travel in both directions. So I think I'll call that good. That was how to assemble a sensor uh, tip panel, get the aileron servos in there, do some of the wiring. And then um, in the next video, we're basically gonna do the same thing to the um, center panel. So there's two panels that compose the, uh, comprise the center panel. So we'll get servos in those and hook up the linkage and see how the wiring is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next part of this series when we do the uh, flap servos.